Hey Tom, Synth Anatomy guys, welcome to NAM. Uh, we are already fried day one, of course. Um, traction booth, lots to talk about this year. Um, we have our annual update to the workstation waveform. Uh, this year, there's sort of three key sort of area feature areas. First off, we have a big sort of update to the user experience, the UX workflow and UX. Over the last few years, we've been pummeling a lot of cool new features in. And this year, we, we took the, the, a step back and said, how can we make it a lot more elegant for the users to manage those features? So one of the big things is we've added an actions panel on the side in the browser. Dave, you can just pull up the actions panel. What the actions panel allows you to do is essentially favorite features that you want to keep at the top of the list, show and hide features you don't want to. So it's a fully customizable panel with all of the common actions. You can create actions, you can, you know, so it essentially allows you to customize the app and make it much, much easier and faster to get to the features that you want. Obviously being a, a door with a huge amount of capability, the difficulty is how do you get to the, to the real sort of set of features that match your workflow. So the actions panel allows you to fully customize it and turn the app to be exactly how you want it. So uh, it's like a modular for the actions. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, because you can have multiple browsers open in our app, you could have one browser doing, you know, actions, another browser being your loops, and then, you know, so you can fully customize how, how the panel works. Lots of other sort of smaller UI tweaks and editing tweaks in the workflow, which makes it uh, a lot, lot, I mean, if you're, a, if you're a regular user of ours, there's a ton of sort of smaller stuff in there that you'll notice real quickly. Next up, kind of a next sort of big sort of feature batch is last year we focused on MIDI composition with all our pattern generated uh, technology. This year we took the focus and put it onto audio. And so this year there's a full pro suite of audio editing capabilities. Um, we have now dedicated edit windows that allow you to take uh, information offline and start working on it outside of the main arrangement. Um, one of the big things is we can now do what's called uh, edit groups, which allow you to sort of select uh, multiple tracks and then edit them simultaneously. And one of, the, one of the big features that we get from doing this is what we call Groove Doctor. Uh, other people are probably familiar with Beat Detective in Pro Tools. Uh, we, we looked at that workflow, uh, which is an incredibly powerful and, and useful workflow, essentially allows you to take multi-track drums and phase coherently quantize them. You know, so essentially the way the process works is you, you take your multi-track, you choose a couple of target tracks that you want to use as the basis of the quantize, usually a kick and a snare, and then you edit all of the other drums around those those edits. So, so it's a re and we you know analyzed the workflow, made it super easy, step by step, so people who aren't familiar with Pro Tools' version can just walk through this super easy, but incredibly powerful tool. We can also use that to export, uh, you know, groove maps from live drums and everything. So essentially audio just got a massive, massive update. And then sort of, oh, actually, before I move on from that, the other massive thing with the audio side of things is we're the only door to now include Auto-Tune. So Auto-Tune are here at the show launching a brand new plugin called Auto-Tune Access. You now get that included with Waveform 10. So not only do you get that, but remember you also get Ceremony's Melodyne included in Waveform 10. So with all of this new audio editing, plus Auto-Tune, plus Melodyne, in every version of Waveform 10. So that's, I mean, pretty much audio editing manipulation on steroids. Um, and it's upgradable to the big versions here. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course, yeah. The next kind of big feature bucket, which is one of those prickly topics that people don't usually like to talk about, and we are being very open about, is stability. In the last year, you know, every door faces the problem of plugins crashing, taking down the app, you know, people losing work. So, you know, we spent a lot of time figuring out what the best sort of fix was for this. You know, some people choose uh, sandboxing. You know, there are pros and cons to that method. It can be performance hit. It's not 100% reliable. You know, there, there are various ways you could do it. What we ended up concluding was, from the user's perspective, what, what we want to be able to do is minimize the impact of any crashes. I mean, a crash is, is practically impossible to eradicate it completely. So really, what we want to do is say, okay, if the system does crash, how do we get past that and back to the, the guy working as quickly as possible? So now the system is constantly saving. 
The, ju the user doesn't have to do anything. It's constantly saving we in the background. From Bitwig, it, they have a sandbox system. So they use sandbox, but yeah. again, I'm just like, you know, we 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 have a lot of respect for the Bitwig guys and what they're doing, and we trawl their forums and see all the commentary from their users. And a lot of the feedback is, you know, sandboxing. A, it takes a, a, you know resources away. So what we were finding is users, even if they have sandboxing, were figuring out the bad plugins and then turning sandboxing off to get the performance update back, and, sort of, and then a system might crash again. So you're uh, saving now every second, or constantly? Yeah. I'm every time something is changed, um, it will save, save a really quick snapshot of it. So if uh, something does bring the app down, it will just relaunch almost instantly with all of your work exactly where it was prior to the, the thing. The point is, is to say we could eradicate crashes completely is unrealistic. So what we focus on with this is saying, okay, if there is a crash, how can it come back as quickly as possible so the user can continue working? Of course, that plugin that caused the crash gets taken offline, you know. But beyond that, we've developed, or Dave's developed, a, a tool called PluginVal, which we're sharing with third-party developers, which allow developers to test in a, in a developer environment their plugins and see exactly why there might be instabilities. And we're sharing that, it's fully it's open source, right? You know, developers can get it, test the plugins. So as developers build plugins, they can use this tool and it will improve their stability across multiple platforms. And we provide that, right? We're being proactive. We're, we're trying to collaborate with plugin developers to make that whole ecosystem more stable. Talking about uh, plugins, there are new plugins included in Waveform. Lots of new plugins, my gosh, yeah. So we have 62 new effects plugins in Waveform 10 based on the popular uh, Air Windows DSP, uh, which you know is out there, open source, and has been highly regarded. We, we took that and collaborated with them, created a whole new suite of 62 new plugins. Uh, Dave will pull a couple up. We, we themed them with these, this cool circuit board style. They're very focused, very, we call them our artisan collection, because they're very sort of focused plugins, and you can place them in one of our racks and, and link them all together in creative ways. And, so you get all of that in the new version. Um, there's a brand new subtractive synth that comes with all versions of Waveform as well. Can we see this? Yeah, Dave will pull it up for us. We're still tweaking the UI slightly, so it's not final UI, but... It's developed again with uh, Wolfram, right? Wolfram, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all the same engine that we, that we developed, you know, with Biotech, Collective, all our retro mods all run the same engine under the hood. Uh, so I have the feeling that um, traction becomes or waveform becomes more and more um, instrument powered. In as or yeah, I mean it's it's as much about last sound year, design, synth design. Last year you had a sampler or a kind of sampler. Multi sampler, yeah. yeah the multi sampler is badass. I mean, the, the really cool thing about it, we've done a bunch of tweaks to the multi sampler this year as well. But essentially, the sampler we've we've focus again on the workflow. I mean, it's a standalone multi-sampler. It's all about getting content into it, manipulating it, and then saving it to your own sound library. It's like the core thing that we try and sort of drive home in our users is using a sampler to create your own sound library is so important. And I mean, that's how your music sounds like you, is if you develop your own sound library. And the new subscriptions will be included in every... Uh... Yeah, it's, it's, it's with the door, yep. Um, but yeah, so like the sampler, you can rip from any other app on your computer. So the big thing there is I can just go onto my web browser and search the web for sounds. Like say I wanted the sound of a waterfall or something like that. Okay. You can find videos on the web and take that sound and, put, and port it straight into our sampler. Wow. You know, stuff like that. It's like we want people to be able to get content into the sampler, manipulate it, and then save it. And that's where things like our track loop format becomes really cool. Because you can actually save snapshots of tracks as sound loops. So you can create your sound library, and then say a year down the line, you, you go through your sound library and find that amazing bass loop. When you call it back in, it'll reload the whole track, load the sampler, load everything you, you did to make that sound. So you can then integrate that into whatever track you're working on at the time. So, yeah, so it's all, all really thought out workflow stuff. Um, what else? We're launching an all new synth in our Traction Presents program. Uh, it's called Spacecraft by 
it's Delta the, V audio. It's the which is already on iOS. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we're bringing it to market on desktop, on, on Mac, and so I'm very happy. It's yeah. a wonderful thing. There, you, exactly. Yep. So that'll be available in the next probably month or so. Uh, Taiho's here again. We had a big, big update with WaveRazor with uh, Richard Devine doing a whole bunch of patches. And then there's that bad boy. What do I see down in the middle there? Yeah, we'll be coming later, video uh, when, it, when the firmware is better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, it will be available, the new traction? Yes. Yeah, within, it's usually within two or three weeks when we get back. When, okay. Dave, when Dave sobers up from NAM. We will typically release it. So, depending on how much he drinks in the next and couple for of days. What price? Uh, it's, uh, there's new pricing, so base price is still the same, 109, and then the next bundle up is going to be the 259, and then we're doing an everything bundle, which is everything, which is 499. Those bundles are really good for new customers coming to the platform. So, what we're also introducing this year is a custom plug-in bundle maker so people can go in and say okay I might, I might already have biotech might have that but i want to update waveform and i want some retro mods so you can build your own bundle and get discounting and we're adding traction cash so that you get rewards if you stay with us and you start buying plugins over the years you get cash back which can be redeemed on the site to buy more stuff so we're really trying to sort of figure out rewards for our long-term customers you know people who year after year are supporting us and buying our cool new stuff you know, lots of cool rewards for those guys too, so, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.